coming up on The Amazing Art Show, Wax Resists. And welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam, and today we are doing a wax resist. And you pretty much need everything and the kitchen sink because you need some water out of it today. So let me go over our strange list of things that you're going to need today. Um, okay, you're going to need some heavy duty kind of paper, so something kind of thick. I'm doing this itty bitty little small piece just to kind of demo some things, but my finished piece is on a larger sheet of paper, so like 9 by 12, something like that. Um, you're going to need some watercolors, um, water from the sink, you need a brush. Also from the kitchen, you need some salt, and you need to see if maybe mom has some little travel size squirt bottles, and you'll need a couple of those depending on what you what colors you would like to come up with. Um, inks, which you can get these at like Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um, Joann Fabrics, any place like that that kind of sells art supplies. Um, if you don't want to get these, because they are, they can be a little bit expensive, um, you can also, if you happen to have any of your leftover um, little pellets that you use to dye Easter eggs, you can also use those. Um, and those are just going to go inside your little water bottle and then you're just going to add a little bit of water to them. Don't add a lot or it'll dilute it way too much. Um, and you can do it that way or you can get the inks and then put those in there, add a little bit of water and that works as well. Um, you're also going to need some squirt bottles and you're going to put a little bit of acrylic paint, which is the next thing I was about to say. Um, you'll need some acrylic paint. and. In the bottles, you're going to put in a little bit of acrylic, and then you're going to water it down. And um, you'll also need just plain acrylic minus the water and the bottle as well. And we've used this before. This is the um, glitter glaze, and it's just like a super, super shiny glaze. We've used that before. Um, and then. You're going to need a work area that you can get dirty because this is going to get very messy. Um, and then last thing you're going to need are going to be some stencils. Now, if you happen to have a mom that's really awesome and she has art supplies and stuff like that, or maybe even dad, um, you might have some different stencils that you might want to use. And I've got like the alphabet, I've got um, different ones like flowers and birds. These are my favorite. They have like animal prints and just different textures. So you can get these same place that you can buy the dyes. Um, and they're pretty cheap, so they're not too bad. Um, but if you don't have those laying around your house, then you can also find other things. You might find a ribbon that has some kind of a pattern on it that you could use as a stencil. Um, you could, I don't even know what this is or where I found it but it's awesome. I really like it. Um, this stuff, this weird stuff, it's kind of, um, I don't even know what it's made of. It's kind of like a little plastic, but it gives you a really good little grid pattern. I don't know what it's used for. Um, and then, of course, if you can't, if you don't have any of that, you could also just use um, like little cups. You can, can create, you can create some little circle patterns using those. Um, things from the kitchen. You could even use, um, mom probably has some, maybe some serving pieces that are plastic that you might be able to use that you can squirt and then you'll get the positive and the negative from those. And that is pretty much it. Like if that's like not very much, but it's a lot of stuff, I know, but it's a super fun project. Okay, so, oh, and one last thing. You need a white um, oil pastel or if by any chance you are going to get the egg dye, inside that usually is a little piece of wax and you could use that as well. Okay, so let's get started today. And I've got a lot of different pieces that I'm gonna be bringing in as we go, just cause this is, you have to let it dry in between and all that kind of good stuff. Y'all know how this works. Okay, so um, with your either wax or your oil pastel, you are going to do a continuous or an infinite line which means that it's going to start in one place, it's going to do whatever you want it to do, but then it's going to hook back up with itself 
so that it is a line that can travel that path forever, 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 okay? So, and you wanna press down pretty hard, and your paper is a light color, so your white oil pastel, it's kinda sometimes hard to see it, but just do the very best you can. And you wanna try to get at least two large loops in there, and it can do whatever you want it to do. Just make sure that you get those loops in there. And then you wanna start, you wanna go back to where you started. So you're really not gonna be able to see that very well, but um, it's there, I promise. Okay, so then you're done with that. And what's gonna happen, this is going to create our wax and um, our wax resist. So what's gonna happen next is we're gonna be putting a very watery um, watercolor on top of the oil or the wax, depending on which one you used. And um, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have, you know, this is kind of your science lesson. The wax or the oil hates water, water hates them, and so they repel one another. So when you paint, it's not going to stick in those places where you have the oil or the wax. It's going to repel it, all right, or resist it. So, um, so the next thing that I want you to do is you're going to get your brush and you're going to get your paints. And I want you to use all of the warm and the cool colors. And, oops, just remember one thing. I want you to take your brush, get it wet, and just kind of paint it over your paper and just get it wet. You can actually see right now how it is repelling or resisting um, where the oil pastel is. It's showing you really, really well. So just cover your paper because we want our colors to really blend and mix together. So if we will wet our paper ahead of time, it will help us achieve that a lot better. Okay, now back to what I was saying. So warm and cool colors. And I don't want you to do stripes of colors. I just want you to kind of do blobs of color. So you're just going to kind of lay it on. I'm not really painting it on. I'm just kind of tapping my brush along the edge there. And I want to, I don't want to have it be like all warm on one side and all cool on another. I want to really kind of spread it out. So I'm going to do a little bit of red there, but then I'm also gonna come in and I'm gonna do some here. And we've talked before about that rule of three. Like if you use a color in your, in your composition, you want to try to use it in odd numbers. So even if it's just the little itty bittiest bit, so I'm gonna come up here. And you can see from where I added my water how it's already on its own. It's just kind of taking on its own little path, which is exactly what we want. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do some orange. And we do want them to mix together, so when they touch one another, they will usually kind of start to bleed. The colors will bleed together, and that is perfectly fine. I'm gonna dab a little bit up here, and I'm even gonna come in and do just a couple little drops here. We'll let whatever happens happen there. And I'm gonna come over here, kind of do the same thing. And down here as well. There's really no like rhyme or reason to this, just kind of as you see it kind of coming together. Sometimes it kind of talks to you a little bit. And then what I want you to do is kind of take your paper and you're just going to kind of tilt it in lots of different directions and let the colors kind of start to mix together a little bit. And now you can really see where my oil pastel and the resist is. You may have some little places where you're, you didn't press quite as hard, so you may have some little breaks in it, which we were going for a continuous line, but you know, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. All right, and then I, so I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to add some yellow now. And you want it to be really, really watery. So I'm getting just a little bitty bit of paint, but I'm getting quite a bit of water. And now I'm going to come in with my cool colors. And I'm going to let them just go right up next to some of those other colors. Now, what you want to try to avoid, and it can be tricky with this project, 
is you don't want too many colors mixing together because then all of a sudden you're going to have a muckledy mess of brown on your paper, which doesn't look very nice. So um, kind of be careful on what's mixing with what. Do the best you can to try to kind of control it. But let me just tell you, with watercolor, there's not a whole lot of controlling it, in my opinion. Other people would probably say otherwise. All right, and you'll notice that this has traveled all the way down over to here, which is fine. And I'm going to come in here with a little bit. And then let's see, I don't have a lot of green, so I'm going to get some green in there. I actually do have some green, it's just the yellow and the blue mixing together made my green over there. And all right, so I'm going to fill this whole thing, and then comes the really cool part. It has to be watery. That's the key. All right, so I've got that part done. You're done with your paints now. You can put those to the side. All right, now, remember when I told you that you were going to need some salt? You're going to be adding salt to your art piece. I've made a very big mess here. Um, and then what's going to happen is it has this, um, this reaction to the salt, and the salt ends up absorbing a lot of the water. So you're just going to dribble it, kind of drizzle here and there. You don't want it all over. You don't want it even, but you can already see how it's starting to kind of pull the color from those areas that I just put it in. And depending on when you put the salt on there, like if I will let this sit here for just a little bitty bit and let it, you almost think it would work better when it's really, really wet, but it also does some pretty cool things if you let it kind of dry and then you put it on. You don't want it all the way dry. You want it just kind of moist, but not like sopping wet, which is kind of tricky. I think I can maybe do it right in here. That area looks like that might do well. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it in a couple little places. And, not that. Okay, so then you're gonna have to let that sit and it's gotta work its magic. So you're just gonna put it over to the side and let it do its thing. And then I'm gonna show you one that I've already done. Okay, so see these areas where it kind of looks like little snowflakes? This is the area that I put the salt when it was a little more dry. So it gives you like these little snowflakey looking shapes. Like see these little spots right in there? If you do it when it's really, really wet, you're going to kind of get a little more of this look where it kind of looks like a little trail of, it's like a little lightened up area. Um, but all of them look really, really really cool together. So try a little bit of both. So try some areas that are really, really wet and some that are a little more dry. Now for our next step, you're going to need to get all this salt off of here. So just get your paper towel and just start rubbing. And it comes off pretty easily. because the next part is the part that you're going to be using those inks. So you're going to be spraying um, the inks onto your paper. And so we don't want that salt to be there because we don't want it to absorb any of the ink. We want to have that showing really well. All right, so that's pretty good. I got a couple little pieces left on there. Okay, now for the fun part. Okay, so we're done with all that. The inks and your stencils, okay? You are going to be using all of your different stencils that you got, and what I want you to do is you're gonna use the positive of the stencil and the negative of the stencil. So I will kind of explain what I mean by that. I'm gonna start um, over here, I think. And I've just, it looks a little bit like a little brick pattern. And let me see here. I think I'm going to try, this yellow is not going to show up that great. I'm going to put it down here. And you're just going to spray it a couple times. And then lift it off. 
have to be really careful when you lift it off. And it's going to give you your pattern here, which is exactly what you want. It might be a little hard for you guys to see, but it's there. Okay, so that's the positive. So now I've got all of this ink that's left on my stencil. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and quickly flip it and place it because if you don't flip it and place it quickly, it's going to drip everywhere. And then you can either use your hand or you can use a paper towel and lift it up. Now sometimes it turns out perfect and sometimes it doesn't, but this project is not about perfection at all. It's about kind of like celebrating your mistakes and um, however it turns out is however it turns out. Um, so you want to start with your lightest colors and then you want to work up to your darkest colors. And I would also suggest that you, um, you want to make sure that as you're working, you still want to see your watercolor underneath. So don't cover, you know, all of that. You want to have some of that showing as well. And with that, and then dab it. Um, the other thing I will tell you about these is You'll notice when I'm squirting them, I'm only doing like squirt, 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 just a little bitty bit because you don't want to douse your whole paper because then it all turns into a big muckledy muck and your paper is too wet and then it just all kind of starts bleeding together, which is what we wanted with our watercolor in the first place, but it's not what we want with our stencils in the second place, I guess. Um, all right, so then let me show you. This is one of my favorites. You've got the alphabet. And I'm going to do one of my darker colors, I think. So I'm just going to lay it down there. And I'm going to do, this is one of my favorite colors. All right. And then I'm going to carefully lift that off. And you can see how that looks. And then I've got all this ink left on my stencil, so I'm going to flip it very quickly and lay it down and go ahead and get the negative as well. All right. So I've got that, and if you get some puddles, you can kind of very carefully clean up your puddles. Don't do it too much like this because then you, it gets on your rag and then you're getting it all over the place and you kind of lose some of your definition. So that's another really good one. And then let me show you what this looks like. I'll lay this here. And your hands are going to get very dirty and your mom may think that you may not ever be the same again, but you will. You'll make it. All my kids were very excited that they got to have purple hands all day. All right, so that one kind of gives you that kind of a texture. And you can also use the reverse of it. And this one works best if you'll just kind of do it in spots. So I'm just going to kind of spread it out a little bit. All right, now we're going to move on to the next part. Okay, so we have got our inks on there, and you could go to town on this and add a lot more. And when your piece of paper is bigger, you can obviously add a lot more than I can. Um, but you, you get the general idea, all right? Okay, so I'm going to put this one over to the side, and I'm going to grab one that I'm working on. Okay, so the pattern that you see here is this stuff. It's kind of what that looks like. This one, I've got the stencil with the the alphabet. I did it in white that time though. And there's some in green up here. And so then the next thing that I want you to do is you're going to get out your acrylic paints and you're going to do some finger painting. All right. And also a little bit of stamping. So I really like how the white does. And I think I need to bring in a little bit more orange. All right, so you're just going to dip your finger in, and you're not really making 
a thing per se. You're, you just want lines or you want shapes, um, but you don't necessarily want to draw a thing. So um, one of the things you can do is, you know, you can do like a little kind of very abstracted, very organic looking little circle. I like to do, like I just find a spot where I want to put something and I like to do lines that go like that. And I usually like to have them kind of cross each other somehow or somewhere. And kind of don't forget about the edges of your paper. And if you get it on there and you need more paint, you can go back and go right over it again. And this also helps to, you know, we talked about doing things in odd numbers. I've got this white over here, but besides this, I really didn't have any other white to kind of tie things together. So it also works to kind of help you, you know, tie things in that you want to tie in. And if there's like an, an area that you want to emphasize, you can use it to emphasize. So I'm going here so that you really notice that little alphabet. And then um, I'm going to come in here with some orange. I need some orange over in this area, so I think I'm going to just do a couple little circles, maybe a line in here. All right. Okay, so um, Next, after you've done that, you are going to finger paint with the glitter that we talked about before. So same kind of thing, just dip your finger in, just pick, you don't want it all over because then it loses its emphasis. If you put it all over everything, then nothing is special, it's all just glittery. So if you have, it, like I said, an area that you want people to notice, you can use it to kind of emphasize, you know, different areas. And then the other thing that you can do is you can use these uh, bottles that you get usually come with caps. So you can get the caps and dip them down inside the paint and you can stamp with them. You see I've got some blue ones over here. Remember to keep them in odd numbers, okay? And, um, and then you're going to let all that dry. Oh, actually wait, before you let that dry, do this. Remember when we talked about these. This is my favorite part. All right. So you're going to take this, you have to give it a little bitty shake, and this is like the messiest, and everybody hold your breath that it squirts, because it gets clogged very easily, and it's kind of crazy, and you can't control it. All right, so you just kind of give it a couple little squirts. I like that one, and I like the white one, which looks like a green one, but it's really not. That one's even more crazy. All right. So now, you're going to put it to the side and let it dry. So I'm going to move that one over there. Okay, so now I've got one here that I have done my stencils. You can see my watercolor in the background. I've gone through with my acrylic paint and I've added some lines. I've done my glitter. And now, we are ready for the last part. And this is kind of, you've been working more in organic kind of shapes some geometric, depending on if you added circles and different things like that. But now you're going to come in, and this is where your, your big kind of organic um, piece is going to come in. And um, you're going to need a paint. It's an acrylic paint, but it's one that squirts, like it squeezes out. Um, and then you're going to be creating a very abstract flower in the corner. All right. So you've kind of got all this rigid numbers and letters and things like that, but then you're going to come in and really soften it up with your, um, with your organic shape. Now you can use black, you can also do white, but whichever one you decide to do, it's best to do it all in that color. So if you're going to do white, do the whole thing white, or if you're going to do black, do the whole thing black. It doesn't look that great to mix it. All right, so you're going to start out with just like a quarter of a circle shape. And this is not a, you know, real science or anything. It's just kind of very whimsical. And then what I want you to do is divide it into three areas. So you can do any kind of, like, think about all the lines that we've talked about. You know, you can do maybe a zigzag in here. So now I've got one, two areas. I want to divide it again. So this time I'm going to do just kind of a wavy line. All right, now. In, I'm going to kind of leave it to you. I want you to do 
some circles in some areas, um, and then you can kind of do whatever you want in your other areas. I like to put the circles up here because your flower ends up kind of looking like a, um, a blah, 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 what am I thinking of? A big daisy or a big sunflower. And so they've got those, if you've ever looked at one like under a microscope, they've got these huge seeds. And so when I think of it, I kind of thought of this as being a big sunflower. And as you can see, I'm not being very particular about my circles. They're not perfect. I'm just going to fill the space. Some are bigger, some are smaller. And then you can come in and think of something that you might want to do here. You know, maybe you want to do, I'm just going to do that. I might even do some other circles in here. And then maybe in here, I just want to copy my zigzag pattern. All right. Okay, so that's going to be the center. Now the next part, you're just doing the petals. And the petals are very kind of crazy. So you're just going to kind of come out, whoops, and then back down. And you want your petals to kind of overlap a little bit. So what I mean by that is don't do them like you come over here and then you come up here and you come down here. And you want them just to kind of overlap. So it's almost like eights a little bit. Okay? And so that's kind of your first row. And then you can actually come back in and you can do some smaller petals that kind of come in here. And while I am finishing up, let's go to the quote for today. Art doesn't transform. It just plain forms by Roy Lichtenstein. Okay, so your last thing, you came in and you added your little bitty small petals. And you're pretty much done at that point. Now, I will tell you, I have come in, and this is just kind of if you want to. Because sometimes I appreciate things being kind of messy but some of you don't. But um, if you're interested, pick a couple of your petals that are kind of up high, and you're gonna really pile the paint in there, just in a couple little areas. And I mean really pile it on. You're gonna make it really thick. And then what you can do, I think I'm gonna do one more down here. All right, and now this is going to sound weird. You're going to take your paper, and you're going to very carefully start to tap it. And as you do, you're going to start, it's working better down here. You'll start to get some little runs where, I'm getting my fingers on the other side. Um, where it kind of will start to drip. I'll show you my other one because it shows up a little bit better. All right, so this is what I mean right here. How you can get those little drips on there. So this is my, my finished one. And that about wraps us up for today. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope that your wax resist um, turns out awesome. Now go out and make some amazing art.